Seven years ago, I was a pregnant 16-year-old. I felt alone and incredibly confused. And then, I had an encounter with Jesus. My name is Maria and this is my story of why I became a Christian. What better place to start a story than at the beginning? I was born in a poor hospital in Mexico City. At birth, I was bleeding internally. The doctors told my parents that I was likely going to die, and my parents couldn't afford the care I needed. My mom made a promise to God that if he let me live, she would give me to him. My family pulled together to save me. They slept in a car outside the hospital, and my auntie sold our piece of land, all so that I could live. And I lived. My father got a scholarship in Australia, so we all moved here. I was a strange and curious child. I spent all my time drawing and trying to control objects with my mind, which never quite worked out for me. I also did believe in God. My mother told me how he saved me and that she gave me to him and I didn't quite understand what she meant, but I always felt a sense that God was with me. And with my young, innocent heart, I adored him. Due to the nature of my father's job, my family had to move around Australia constantly. In total, I attended roughly 16 different schools and some schools I only stayed at for a few weeks. My identity was that of the new girl and I learned that in order to make friends quickly, I had to shape myself to fit my environment. Let's fast forward to the start of high school. There is me, 11 years old, really crooked teeth, <laughs> I was now losing interest in church, not because I had anything against church, just because I found it uh, boring and I just wanted to have fun. You can probably tell by now, not very popular, <laughs> but I didn't care, or at least I didn't care then. I think after a while, being unpopular started to get to me, especially when other people pointed it out. This is probably the time when the emptiness appeared, or at least when I first started to notice it. It wasn't anything much at first, just ignore the little bit of sadness, carry on, just hide from those girls at school and whatever you do, make sure no one finds out what's happening. Moved schools again and decided I didn't want a repeat of that, so decided I would change, well, me. I dyed my hair blonde, straightened it rolled up my skirt, lost some weight. In fact, don't even talk, just observe. How do they act? Copy them, blend in, be whatever they want you to be. All the while the years pass and the emptiness sinks deeper and deeper into your core, into your stomach. You can barely breathe now, but keep smiling. Force a laugh, utter emptiness. I became a master at making others like me. I felt that I had to, being the new girl constantly, and really, it was easy to do. Just be all that they want you to be. Here I am now at 15, I think, maybe 14. There was nothing inside me, just a gaping hole, numbness, a deadening silence. I needed anything, anything to fill this emptiness. I was kicked out of school at the start of year 11 because of a fight. I got a job but was fired from that within a few weeks. I pushed away my family who loved me to be with people that treated me oh so terribly. I think I must have broken my mother's heart. 
But just as she prayed for me when I was her baby, struggling for life, she prayed for me again now. She found a pastor online. His name was Pastor David Price, a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. He started visiting our house weekly, and together they prayed for me. They asked me to join them, but I pushed them all away. I pushed them away to be with people that treated me like I was nothing. Around that time, while I was at a friend's house and hi, I sat in my friend's small dark room, full of smoke, staring out a small window in the upper corner of the room. It was the only window in the dark room, the tiniest little bit of light, and for some strange reason, at that moment, I felt a new and strong sense that I was not where I should be. I tried to ignore the feeling, tried to smoke some more so that it would go away, but it only got louder and louder. I uttered a silent prayer. If you are real, then help me. Within a few weeks of that prayer, I got sick. I mean, physically sick. The smell of drugs suddenly repulsed me. I couldn't stand them anymore. I had to stop. Bed bound with exhaustion, throwing up every morning, time for a doctor's visits. Some tests here and there. The doctor looked tired and annoyed, and with a frustrated tone he spoke. You're pregnant. It took some convincing from his end, but eventually I believed him. I ran out of that clinic. I was crying now. My mum was waiting outside and... As soon as she saw my face, she knew. Everything around me was still, and my mom spoke. In Spanish, she said, You must keep this baby. I have been praying for your deliverance, and I can see that Dios te está salvando. God is saving you. I remembered my prayer a few weeks before the physical illness started, and how the sickness had forced me to stop drugs, so I listened to her. Why? For the grace that she showed me. And for the next year, listen to my mom is what I did. She was there for me. She became my best friend. Many people turned against me. I received many messages and comments on Facebook making fun of me for being a pregnant teenager. People wrote statuses about me. I had old friends laughing at me as they walked past me in the street, and I had angry and disapproving glares in many places that I went. It was just me now, and my parents, and of course my dog, Toby. I felt that the whole world was against me. On the beach. A lot of time on the beach, an isolated beach, with the waves and my thoughts. Now I must tell you that this was the most painful and yet the most beautiful period of my life. I was going to become a single mother at 16, oh boy. Never have I cried as much as I did at this point in time, and yet, I believed what my mother told me, that God was saving me, whatever that meant. I didn't even feel like I knew God, but by some miracle, I believed. My son was born into a room with just me and the midwife, who I had only met a few days prior. He was perfect, a full head of dark brown hair and big, beautiful eyes. I watched him for hours as he slept. He was glowing to me. and I prayed to God a prayer similar and yet different to what my mother prayed when I was born. 
God, you gave me this child to save me, so now I give him back to you. I will raise him to know you, he shall be yours. A new type of love and purpose was planted in my heart. Love, long lost, was blossoming again. But within weeks, the emptiness of my teenage years returned, this time with wrath and darkness and sharp, sharp claws. Memories of my past, fear, shame, thoughts far crueler than ever before. You are an awful mother. Your entire family would be better off if you disappeared. Disgusting and worthless, even God would not want you. Did you know that roughly one in five mothers experience something similar to what I just described? Not always to the same scale, but still, please look after new mothers around you. But there was still that little bit of hope my mother's words echoed. Dios te está salvando. God is saving you. I picked up a dusty Bible and I kid you not, I read it from cover to cover. Every single word, Genesis to Revelation, all in a few short months. No friends, no job, no studies, nothing, just me and a Bible. This is when the miracle happened. Within those months, my heart was changed. My thoughts were changed. Everyone around me at that time, every single person noticed the change. It wasn't slow for me. It was immediate. It shocked everyone. I'd been told so much by all these people who God was and that he was someone not worth knowing if he even did exist for that matter, but when I read about him for myself, it was completely different. He was wonderful and he loved me. But more than that, I, I, I read about the way that he viewed me and that changed everything. I'm not worthless. I'm not cast out. I'm loved. I'm beautiful. I was once a sinner, but now I am a saint. Behold, old things have passed away, and now I am new. I felt God calling me to find a community of believers. This season of just me and God was ending, and it was time for me to make friends. I jumped church to church looking for a new church. I went looking in various places, Hillsong, Baptist churches, eventually I went to a church called Adventist Church. I had gone there for a bit as a child. People were talking to me, making me their friends, well, trying to anyways because a uh, friend? What's a friend? Not sure I know what that is anymore, but I can learn again. I was so afraid, I could barely make eye contact with other people. The past and its abuse was not without her wounds, but God called me forward, so forward I walked into new and good friendships. This time, I didn't change myself to make others like me. I let myself be me, the creative and strange me, and they loved me anyways. A lady approached me at my new church. She gave me Bible studies. She was so kind and so loving. I felt peace whenever she visited my house. All those confusing Bible books I read in those few months made sense now. And the history and prophecies of the Bible, how beautiful, how glorious. I already had a relationship with Jesus at the heart level, but the Bible studies allowed me to understand him at the intellectual level and I fell even more in love. I was baptized. I was glowing. The emptiness was filled, filled 
with Jesus. So, where am I today? Yeah, he's six years old now. He's kind and daring and wonderful, already facing and overcoming his own battles. You have so many more battles to come, but remember, he who lives within you is greater than he who lives within the world. And remember, on the day of your birth, I dedicated you to God in my heart. It was you he used to save me, and a mighty warrior you shall grow to be. Me? I'm not scared or empty anymore. I look people in the eye when I talk to them. Humans no longer frighten me, and I don't hide. I smile. I laugh. And this time, my laugh is real. This doesn't mean my life has become perfect. Since meeting Jesus, I have still faced the death of family members, feelings of sadness, breakups, and temptations to return to my old life. But since I met Jesus, none of these things, not a single one, has been able to shake me. With every trial I face, my faith grows brighter and stronger. As you can see, I, as a person, I am weak. I've made countless mistakes, and yet in Christ I am so, so strong. I finished university. I work as a psychologist at a clinic and a school. Sometimes, the students that come to see me in my room at the high school remind me a lot of myself in high school. Isn't it funny how God works? Sometimes I imagine a younger version of me walking into that room. Dyed hair, empty. Confused, she sits on the chair across from me. She's been sent to see me because her teachers are sick of her. What would I say to her? Honestly, probably nothing. There would be no need to fill in the silence. The silence would not be uncomfortable because I have made peace with her. My name is Maria and I have just shared my story of why I became a Christian. Five years ago I felt called to share it, but the time wasn't right yet. Today the time has come. Whatever your story or condition, I want, I need you to know. You are not too dirty for God, or your life too full of mistakes for you to be used by Him. I was the pregnant teenager whom the world laughed at and despised. But God saw something else in me.